This is the Barbados Today Evening News for Friday, June 1st. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Our top story this evening, the new Mia Motley administration has reached out to the International Monetary Fund to provide balance of payment support, including help in restructuring the island's massive debt. Prime Minister Motley made the announcement this afternoon at the end of another marathon meeting with a social partnership at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre. She said she spoke with the managing director of the IMF, Kristen Lagarde, last night, and the mission will arrive here as early as Tuesday to open formal discussions on IMF assistance. I briefed her on the present state of the public finances of Barbados, the current debt and reserve positions, and I assured her that we are committed to taking decisive action to rebuild Barbados. In turn, Madame Lagarde assured me that the International Monetary Fund stands ready to lend Barbados the necessary assistance and support to these actions. Our Barbados Economic Recovery and Transformation Plan is a partnership for progress. It is intended to initially provide balance of payment support from the International Monetary Fund, and the government has invited, indeed, a mission from the IMF to visit Bridgetown shortly. I'm advised by the governor of the Central Bank that that mission shall be here as early as Tuesday, given the urgency that we have expressed, and I want to thank Madame Lagarde for responding in like form. Further, it is focused on growth, our plan that is, on growth and transformation. The things that some may call social protection are in fact investments for growth for Barbadians into the future. Prime Minister Motley also announced that from today, her government is suspending payments due, to, due on debts owed to external commercial creditors. Similarly, we will endeavour to make scheduled domestic interest payments. However, domestic creditors will be asked to roll over principal maturities until we reach a restructuring agreement. The truth is, our debt has been unsustainable territory for some time. The arrears represent an effective default by the previous government to Barbadians. We have never, and these arrears may I remind you, were at $1.7 billion at the end of September last year, and we are awaiting May 31st figures next week. We have never taken this type of creditor action before. And our actions today are designed, my friends, to ensure that we will never, ever have to do so again. Political observers have today been assessing the decision of St. Michael West MP Joseph Adderley to serve on the opposition one week after his Barbados Labour Party scored a landslide victory at the polls. Adderley informed Prime Minister Mia Motley of the decision in a shock move last night. Political scientist Dr. George Bell told Barbados Today he was surprised at the timing of the development given the BLP's landslide victory only a week ago. But at the same time, it, 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 the issue had to be settled now. So he didn't have much time to make a decision anyway. Because if he didn't do that, they would probably have had to resort to some amendment within the Constitution to accommodate the presence of a leader of the opposition or the role that the leader of the opposition plays. Not so much a leader of the opposition, but the role that the leader of the opposition would play, especially in relation to the selection of senators. So I think that that is why he had to act in the short space of time. But in that sense, it is sudden to be after a victory that is so recent for somebody from the party that won to say that they're going to lead the opposition. Meanwhile, another political scientist, Peter Wickham, does not believe Adelaide's departure will have any major negative impact on the BLP. I, I uh, would identify Reverend Adelaide as being a political lightweight. Once you have the leadership of the opposition being occupied by a political lightweight, it means that there's less temptation for a political heavyweight, and there are quite a few of them in Mia Motley's cabinet, to, to be tempted to cross the floor because the job is taken. 
um, if, if there was a move against her, no, it would have to come from a group. And it's always harder to organize a group than it is to have an individual on a, on a, on a sole crusade. So I think that politically, this does help to stabilize her government in ways that people wouldn't immediately imagine. Uh, and it is, to some extent, not a bad thing for her because now, you know, as I said, there's greater stability on the inside because you have uh, people who are, are presumably heavier weights politically than he is. Uh, will be forced to hold a relatively stable line on the inside because there's no leadership of the opposition to tempt them away. Christina Hines is a lecturer of political science and international relations at the University of the West Indies. She believes there should be some level of accountability by Adelie to his constituents. There are certainly suspicions about his motive, whether what he is saying is the truth, is this for the good of the country, for the good of democracy, or is it about personal gain and advancement? But she says it is not, but I think this will remain in people's minds. And certainly there are questions that need to be answered, that he needs to answer for his constituency. Because certainly there are a lot of people who would have voted for Mr. Adderley because he was a Barbados Labour Party candidate and not just because he has done useful work in the constituency. So I really think there needs to be, there should be a level of accountability to the constituency, especially so soon after the election. Mm -hmm. So there are no grounds to claim that um, he's not happy with the way that the Barbados Labour Party is managing the country because they really haven't begun to manage the country as yet. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital's respiratory unit is getting a $350,000 facelift. The Massey Foundation and the Broadway to Barbados Charitable Trust are renovating the building as well as providing much-needed equipment. Both organizations are providing half the cost of the project. David Neelands is director of the Massey Foundation. As a unit which has been in existence for close to 30 years and which serves, 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 serves somewhere between 1,000 to 1,200 patients annually for all types of respiratory diseases. We believe that the overhaul of the respiratory unit is indeed timely as the preservation of a fresh and sanitary environment is critical to any hospital and equally important for its department which deals with conditions involving breathing, namely but not limited to asthma, lung cancer, sleep apnea and tuberculosis. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. Antigua and Barbuda today became the first CARICOM country to ratify the Inter-American Convention Against Racism, Racial Discrimination and Related Forms of Intolerance. The island's OAS ambassador, Sir Ronald Sanders, presented the instrument of ratification to the OAS General Secretary, Luis Almagro. Sir Ronald said the Gaston Brown administration is at the forefront of efforts to end such discrimination. He added, it is a matter of pride for Antigua and Barbuda that as a small nation, it has done groundbreaking work to advance a legally binding definition of racism, aggravated discrimination and intolerance. And finally, on the international scene, U.S. President Donald Trump announced today that a nuclear arms summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un will go ahead as scheduled on June 12. The U.S. pulled out of the meeting last week, but Trump says the talks are back on. We get the details in this Reuters report. We'll be uh, 
meeting on June 12th in Singapore. The meeting between President Donald Trump and North Korea's Kim Jong-un is back on only a week after Trump canceled it. And I think we're over that, totally over that. And now we're uh, going to deal and we're going to really start a process. The breakthrough announced after a nearly two hour meeting at the White House between Trump and Kim Yong Chol, one of North Korea's most senior officials. The highest level talks between the two countries in 18 years. Kim delivered a letter to Trump Friday from Kim Jong Un, reportedly confirming his commitment to nuclear talks. And that letter was a very nice letter. Oh, would you like to see what was in that letter? Yeah, would you like? How letter? much? How much? The two sides now back to laying the groundwork for the Singapore meeting on June 12th. A head-spinning reversal after Trump seemed to walk away a week ago amid new defiance from Pyongyang. A shift to a more conciliatory tone, getting the discussions back on track. And that's news this evening. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also sign up for BT's WhatsApp news alerts, and you can subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good evening.